Good morning, Kirst. Good morning, Amy. How are you? I'm good. Happy Wednesday in ISO. Happy April Fools. Oh, it totally is. Did your family do any April Fools this year? Um, my kids tried to and I was just too... Like, Amy, I was in the shower and Amy jumped out and scared me <laughs> and she was really happy with that. And then Oliver brought in his fake snake and pretend and dropped it and went, oh, there's a snake. But I know it's a fake snake. So he was like, see, Amy, I told you it wasn't going to work. Like, <laughs> and now they're just both grumpy. So welcome oh. to a Grumpy Wednesday. Excellent. My <laughs> kids um, did a couple. So Jesse waited till Elijah was asleep last night and he changed his screensaver from a bomber's screensaver to a Collingwood screensaver on his <laughs> iPad. And then he also changed the passcode. So he'd have to look at the calling good screensaver while trying to work out his new passcode <laughs> and so then once jesse went to sleep i did that to him <laughs> um and then i was just telling you Kirst, just before we came on cow jumped in the shower and the kids attempted a practical joke on him was they sticky taped across the door frame so when he opened the door he'd like be faced with a booby trap of sticky tape and he just like looked at it, swiped it out of the way and kept walking. He didn't even give them a courtesy laugh. Oh. <laughs> so I don't think there's going to be um, very many corporate April Fool's jokes. I know Google has said they're not going to do one this year because the best. It's not funny. No, the... the best thing would be if someone woke up and went, hey, 2020 was whole April Fool's. Let's start again. Yes. That's what I read. One of my friends said that don't do any April Fool's. 2020 is already a joke, a big enough joke. We don't <laughs> need any more jokes. But I think we need some liberty and we need some, you know, fun and laughter in yeah. our days. Just not, you know, I found out um, last night that friends of mine's girl is pregnant. And she's a friend of mine as well. She's um, just got married. It's a honeymoon baby. Aww. And I was like, oh, lucky they did it last night and not today. Because if they did it today, I would be like, are you serious? Is this a joke? Is this not a joke? <laughs> like, because they're, you know, like she, they're very young. <laughs> like, yeah. So my friend is actually going to be a great grandma at 61. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. My grandma was a great grandma at 62. Wow. Yeah. So, no, no, yeah. She was a grandmother at 32. Sorry, I'm getting this all wrong. So she became a mum at 16. Yes. Her daughter became a mum at 16. Yes. So she was a grandma at 32. Yes. Incredible. I mean, at different times. They were in a village in Cyprus, so completely different times. But still, that's pretty yeah. cool. And this family, they all get married young. So I was like, oh, wow, I sent a message to my friend saying, you could be a great, great grandmother by the time oh you're goodness. 80 if oh my your goodness. family keep going, you know, getting married when they're 19 and pregnant at 20, like they That's all incredible. have done. I found yeah. out yesterday one of my girlfriends was pregnant too. Oh, I had picked it, but they hadn't announced it and I wasn't going to ask because you don't ask that stuff um so when she told me I was like so excited oh and I've got two friends due fun. this month two of my closest friends are both due this month so it's except I'm not going to be able to see their babies and have newborn snuggles and smell their heads but you'll you be know. able to see them you yeah, just won't be able to know, see the them in real life and the, the yeah. smell and the, oh, it'll happen yes Super exciting. So there's some lightness and, and brightness for us all. <laughs> exactly. What's today's episode about, Kirst? Ah, oh, don't put it down. Put it away. Say it again. Don't put it down. Put it away. I don't say it nearly as well as our beautiful friend Shannon does, though. I know, So right? tell us about that. Oh, my goodness. So we have spoken on our podcast about a bajillion times about making a song out of don't put it down, put it away. And Cal and I have tried and failed and it's just been sitting on the back burner. We got the most beautiful surprise this week when one of our Head, Heart and Home course members posted that she had written the don't put it down, put it away song and she recorded it for us. So here it is, guys. We're going to give you um, exclusive ears on it. It is incredible. Shannon, thank you so much. Here it is. Here's a saying to use today. 
Don't put it down, just put it away. To keep decluttered, don't let it lay. Don't put it down, just put it away. For things have homes, a place to be. So put them away, you'll feel so light and so free. Just remember what Amy and Kirsty say. Don't put it down, just put it away. Don't put it down, just put it away. Don't put it down, just put it away. Just do it now. So how cool is that? If that doesn't get stuck in your head, you need to play it again and again. And if you need to play it again and again without rewinding our podcast a bazillion times, you can head over to our Facebook page, our community community page. Shannon has also put it up in the Art of Decluttering community page as well. So search out um, a post from Shannon Mallory and you will see it. It's so awesome. <laughs> so we think that one of the great tips for when you're in ISO, you know, we talked yesterday about the slip. Um, one of the great ways that you can avoid the slip is to really, really embrace don't put it down, put it away. And if you take the extra couple of seconds that it takes to implement that habit, that will change the way that your home runs, especially if you can um, make other people in your home get on board with it. That will help as well. Yeah, we were talking in our course last night about how um, – how to get on top of things in the home and how things at this season, things are going a little differently to normal. And so that's why we thought, oh, yeah, let's talk about don't put it down, put it away. And we think that we know that it's helped us in our homes so much and it is really easy to not (laughs) – it's really easy just to put something down Um, and it it creates – it takes creating a habit to not put things down but put put them away and just walk those extra couple of steps to put it back in its home and then we come to the next problem what if it doesn't have a home Amy yeah well now's a really good time to create some homes once you're in the habit of don't put it down put it away when you have something in your hand and you are going to practice that habit and you can't find a home, right there, that exact moment is when you should find a home. That's the perfect time because you want to put it away where you're going to look for it next time. Where's the most logical place for it? What other things can people think of when they're finding a home for things, Kirst? Does it even need a home in your house? Like, does it actually need to live in your house or should it um, need to live somewhere else? Should it be passed on to somebody else um, after (laughs) COVID-19? So should it go to your pile of donations or is it past its life and just needs to be chucked out? Um, But chances are, if you're touching it, it probably does need a home. So thinking about where you would go to use it is often the best place, like Amy said. Some of the things in our house that Um, have been harder that I've noticed the kids in particular have forgotten to don't put it down, put it away, is when they're um, playing and they're having something to eat. I'm finding there's like a muesli bar wrapper or a bowl where they've had grapes and they're just being left around, whereas usually they're pretty good at putting them away, I think, because there's no routine to our life at the moment um, that things are just ending up wherever they are. And I'm hoping that once we start distance ed homeschooling, um, that they will get back into the habit of that. And that's also just a gentle reminder, isn't it? Hey, kids, where does the muesli wrapper go? <laughs> hey, kids, where does the bowl live? And that doesn't, and and that can take so many different forms. You can just, you know, remind them and or i.e. nag them every time you see something lying around or you can just do a power 15 minute cleanup where you just say hey okay everybody devices down for 10 minutes and let's get this house back into um, order and that can be done before lunch or after lunch or you know before dinner time or before bedtime Um, so you can you know depending on your own 
mental health and your own ability to cope at the moment. Um, you can choose when that happens and how that happens. Um, if things are getting on your on your nerves, well, um, maybe it is time to gently ask people to put things back together or have a family meeting even and say, hey, everybody, this is really frustrating me. I know that we're all at home and it's really easy to be lazy at the moment. But for me and my mental health, I really need you guys to um, start thinking about everybody else in the house and start putting your own things away so that I'm not the only person doing all the cleaning up. Yeah, I'm going to totally do the 15 minutes of power. I think what would work in our family is if we do 15 minutes once we're all up in the morning of chores. So kids do the dishwasher, the dish rack, put on a load of washing, do all those kinds of things. And then I think we'll do one at the end of the day where it's just resetting for the morning. So that's going to be my challenge. If other people are interested in joining me, power of 15 minutes for the win. Yeah, we're just, we, as I mentioned yesterday, we're still just operating semi-normally, like clothes are being put on every morning and because we're still, we're doing distance education. So we're, Simon's making the kids morning tea so that at morning tea time, they can easily do them, have their food. And then we all break at lunchtime and then we go for a walk at lunchtime or get out Simon and Ollie went for a bike ride and run yesterday while Emily and I went for a walk. Um, and then we, because we're doing distance education out on the table for Emily and I, Oliver's in the playroom. Um, he doesn't want to be out with us because Emily likes making noise because she's a little pee. Um, and Oliver likes having some quiet. So we're all s separated all throughout the house. Um, but we've been putting the dining table back to a dining table after like at three o'clock when we're finished doing um, distance education. So that's working for our family. Um, but that doesn't mean that everybody else has to be like that. You can leave distance education out all night if that's what you, if that's fine with everybody in your home. Love it. It's just finding what works and refining that. And I think um, having people share their different experiences is always helpful. Kirst, I have a question for you. Yes. <laughs> what are you grateful for? I oh, remember. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know. Congratulations, I'm, Amy. I didn't even have a good sleep last night, and I feel like I'm more awake today than I have been in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's because that's how your body's used to operate. It's possibly right. It's going, what? All this sleep? This is unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so looking forward to school holidays. Oh, for us. Love it. It's the best. Except my kids still wake up really early. And... Yeah, but mine do too. Mine are up by 6.30, 7 o'clock. They just don't come into our room. Like they're allowed to have their screens when they wake up. So we get peace and quiet. Uh, whereas our kids are noisemakers. So no, we don't even know ours are up. They quietly come and close our bedroom door and then we've got peace and quiet. Oh, that's so lovely. Maybe that's what I'm grateful for, actually, is independent children. I was um, chatting to a girlfriend yesterday whose kids are four and six and it just reminded me of how much work is required when you've got little ones. Like you can't even say, hey, guys, can you make lunch for everyone? Mm. You can't even get them to cut the watermelon up. Like there's so many things when you've got little ones in ISO that is really difficult. So I'm actually just really grateful for very independent um, 11 and 13 year olds. And yes, so much so that like I can say to them, hey, when you're making lunch today, can you make lunch for me? Because I can't be bothered making any for me. Or can you put a load of washing on? Or can you get the Hello Fresh and unpack it? Like, there is so much independence that is paying off for our family in this season. So I'm grateful. Is it okay to be grateful for not having toddlers? No, <laughs> you're grateful for the season that you're in with your children. Yes, that's right. That's a good frame. Yeah, because that's what I've been thinking about our, us and how, you know, even in two weeks when I'm on school holidays and you're back to distance education, yeah, it won't be any different for you. Because you've got an 11 and 13 year old. They're very independent learners. Yes. Like, and they're very independent children. They're very yes. um, responsible and I can trust them to do things and they're good yes. contributors. Yeah. Whereas Oliver at 10 is there. Yeah. Um, you know, he get gets Emily 
um, morning tea, like when we've been on doing podcast recordings and it's been morning tea time, he's got Emily morning tea. Not that she's not capable of doing it. She just bats her big eye lids at him and he does it. <laughs> um, but she, um, you know, she's... Um, has learning difficulties, so I really need to sit and do her um, distance education with her. So it's very challenging um, and it's just a different season to what you're in. Exactly. Like you'll still be able to sleep in until whatever time in, yeah. in two weeks' time. And that's why I was like, well, actually in two weeks' time when I'm on holidays, it's actually not going to be too much different to what it is now. No, it it just won't, won't be. be without distance education. Yeah. Yeah. So Simon still on. gets up at the crack of dawn. Simon still runs the house like a ship when <laughs> even during school holidays. So there'll still be routine and, and regularity in our home in two weeks' time anyway. So I think um, that I just need to look for silver linings in spaces. Exactly. <laughs> so I did what is your silver last, lining? Yeah, I thought of something last night that I wanted to be thankful for today and now it's gone. So let me think of something today that I should be <laughs> thankful for today. I think I can hear it raining. So I think I'm going to be thankful oh. for the rain. Um, it makes my children want to cuddle up to me and watch movies in the afternoon. So I'll be thankful for the rain. And I'm also thankful that I am thankful for routine. I am thankful that Simon's home and he's putting a load of washing on when he gets up and he's feeding the kids and, you know, he's doing um, all that he can to help me um, be the bearer of most of the load when it comes to distance learning <laughs> and keeping the house running. So, yeah, I'm thankful for him as well. There's lots to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. We hope that you have a lovely Wednesday, our beautiful community. Keep letting us know some ideas for In ISO with Kirsten Ames. We're loving what's coming through and we'll continue to address your topics day by day. Day by day. I'm going to sing. Now. I don't know that song. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Oh. Nobody really needs to hear me singing, so it's all good. Oh, I'm so happy to hear you singing. That's fine. <laughs> yep. Don't the think one it's person. Yeah, that's right. That's you can sing for me after we stop recording. Okay. Don't forget to rate and review. Uh, we've had heaps of reviews coming in the last couple of days, so thank you so much. That makes a big difference to us and helps us on the Apple Podcast charts. We will see you tomorrow. Have an amazing day in ISO. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you've learnt something awesome today, we'd love you to leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook so others can find our podcast too. Don't forget you can see the show notes in your podcast app or over at our website, artofdecluttering.com.au. So if there's anything you want more info on, check it out there. If you'd like to join our supporter community, you can do so over at patreon.com slash decluttering. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom.